Hello, I'm the Gingerbread Man, and I'm here to tell you all about how the traditional fairy story of Hansel and Gretel is being transformed into a brand new musical Christmas show at Carnegie Hall this December. Have you been to Carnegie Hall before? It is at the heart of Dunfermline and Fife, and it has been producing fabulous Christmas shows that have been enjoyed by audiences for many years. It was built in 1937 as a concert hall and opened by Louise Carnegie daughter of the famous Andrew Carnegie, the philanthropist whom the hall is named after. The style of the building reflects the period it was built, including the lovely Art Deco style features. This foyer will look very different in December when it is changed into the magical winter wonderland forest. You can create some of the decorations yourself if you like, but more about that later. If you have been to the theatre before, you will recognise the auditorium. The seats look the same as the original style, but they are actually only 10 years old as they were all completely replaced in 2002, giving us 511 seats. We created more accessible space for wheelchair users, space to include big sound desks, and also just space to give people more leg room. 200 of the seats are upstairs on the balcony, and as you can see we have great views from all seats. We are going out to the stage now. You may not have been here before though. This is the stage door where the cast and crew come into the dressing rooms below. Up here are the wings of the stage and through here is the stage where you can see how it feels to be part of the show itself. The special seat is safe for the stage manager. He's making sure that everything is happening as it should do on the stage. He has a lot of buttons to push and headphones to stay in contact with the rest of the crew. Now, come with me as we have a look at what the performers get to see when they are up on the stage. This is a view that the performers have of the audience. Lots of empty seats now, but come opening night they will be full. Will you be there? Right, come with me. We're going to go back down the stairs and have a look at the dressing rooms. This is where magical transformations take place as the cast get into character. Is my makeup okay? So, now you have had a quick look at where we are holding our show. What about the people creating it? Carnegie Hall is part of an organisation called On at Fife and they are creating this brand new show. The first step is to write it and luckily we have an expert to call on, writer and director Jonathan Stone, who has been working on pantomimes and Christmas shows for over 20 years. Let's find out more from him. What are the key elements to making a successful show? Oh, there's lots of key elements, but I suppose the most important element is it's got to be fun. It's got to be entertaining, both for the mums and dads and all the kids. Um, uh, it's got to have a great, great story. Um, fabulous actors, fabulous music, so lots and lots of elements. We wanted to do a fairy tale, but we didn't want to do a sort of traditional pantomime style fairy tale. Um, uh, and we looked um, uh, at several um, uh, more obscure fairy tales, but then we sort of kept coming back to Hansel and Gretel. Um, now it was very dark when it was first written, so one of our challenges is to make it much more fun and light and Christmassy. Um, uh, and we thought it had all the elements that needed to make a great, great family Christmas show. There are so many different elements involved. First of all, there's the writing. So you've got to work with all the people at the theatre to, to make sure it's what they want. Then you've got the music, and we have the fabulous Karen McIver, who's the musical director. Um, then, of course, the script, um, uh, which needs to be done. The actors who need to be cast, the set that needs to be designed, the costumes that need to be designed and made. So it's a huge, huge, huge job, and it's probably the biggest thing we do at the theatre all year. Well, it's, it's a wonderful job being the writer and the director because it means that I get to see the show through from the very, very beginnings, the germs of the ideas, right through to it being on stage at the very end. And it's wonderful also to be able to write for the particular theatre, the Carnegie Hall, that it's going to be on at, and then see it right through to the very end. So it's very exciting and it's a very satisfying way of working. 
And because it's Christmas, we're setting the story at Christmas time. So there's lots of snow, there's some really magical effects, a wonderful moving set with all little houses that spin around and trees that move. Um, uh, very, very, very exciting stuff. So here we are now in the scenic workshop where our amazing designer, Alison Irwin, makes all our sets. And the way sets are made is, first of all, the first stage is we build a model box. And this model box is tiny, but then this will go on to become the huge set that fills our stage. So here we are with the Hansel and Gretel model box. And it's all set in the woods, as you can see. And here's our front curtain, which is all forest, and that comes out to reveal our first scene, which you'll see is all trees. And this set is wonderful because everything moves to reveal Hansel and Gretel's little cottage. And that's the first thing we see, but then we want to go inside. So what happens is everything spins around. So you go from the outside to the inside of the cottage. And then you've got various little scenes in there. For instance, we go to Hansel and Gretel's bedroom and these little beds will slide on. And then if we want to go to Hansel and Gretel's dining room, a little table and a bench will come on. So that's one of the first scenes, but then everything moves around. So the house disappears, spins around again and trundles off. Trees come back in. And then of course, the big, big exciting thing is when they discover the gingerbread house and you get these wonderful swirly lollipops and these all spin around. So all these little things, for instance here, look, you can see little trees will become full-size trees that fill the whole stage and magically move about um, as if by magic. So there we are. That's the model box for Hansel and Gretel, which will then become the full-scale set for the show. So I'm here now with Lynn Byes, um, uh, who is the costume designer for Hansel and Gretel. Now again, the costumes take a very, very long time to make. And first of all, they have to be designed. And that's where Lynn comes in. She designs all the costumes and then she makes them. So Lynn, we're here with um, some pictures of what the witch is going to look like. Yes. Well, um, if you yeah. want to show everybody. Yeah, this is going to be our witch. And she's going to be, she's going to be represented as Sweetie. So she's going to be very colourful and there's lots of little liquor sauce sorbs and sweets which are going to be made in 3D and sewn onto a costume. And then we get to talk about the sort of materials and the colours that the costumes are going to be. And this, I think, then is an, another one of our witch's costumes. Yes, this is going to be our, our witch. It's going to be very fitted. Um, it's going to be in purple. So we have this lovely fabric which, which she's going to be made out of which is nice and it should uh, catch the light. And you always have to work, when you're working in the theatre, you can never use dull material because it's got to shine and shimmer in the lights like these colours here. Okay. So once I've seen all of these and said, yes, that's fantastic, Lynn then goes ahead and makes them all up. So a lot of work goes in to a lot of costumes to make the show extra special. The staging of a show is not just a set. Production manager Barry, who assists the director and the producer, works with the whole technical team to create the special effects. So this is the sound desk and basically this controls everything that you hear when you come to see this show. So what we're, what we're experimenting just now is to create the right atmosphere for Hansel and Gretel going into the woods. So we're just going to try out these sound effects. So right now we think we're kind of getting there, but we think we've added in maybe a wee too much, a bit too much wind rustle and possibly a bit too much of the owl going. So we're going to revisit that and re-edit it and then play it back again. The uh, technical team here, they work the sound, they work the lights and they support stage management in creating the, the overall effect uh, that we do for the show here. So this is the, the lighting control desk and through this we can ha literally create hundreds of different lighting effects that add atmosphere to the show. So on here, we, we can add in some more lights. And then once all the lights are sort of added in, to help sort of bring out the atmosphere of the lights, we'll, we'll then add in the haze. Of course, any show needs a cast. The professional actors are auditioned and booked well in advance of the show, but they only actually get two weeks to rehearse before the show begins. Hansel and Gretel also gives local children the chance to perform as part of the chorus. Singing, dancing and acting are all required. 
It's hard work, but it's lots of fun. Here, choreographer Susie Budd is putting some of the kids through their paces. Music is an important aspect of many shows, but this show is an extra special musical version. Musical director and composer Karen McIver has an important job on her hands. Karen, can you tell us more about the music in Hansel and Gretel? So this is this year's version of Hansel and Gretel at Carnegie. Um, what we've looked at is, is take some famous, famous tunes and adapt them to fit in with the script. So sometimes I, I might use some classical music actually, and we looked at Lieutenant Keechee, um, which is a really famous tune that you might not know the title from, um, but once you hear the, the, the famous tune, um, you might recognise that, it's, it's appeared in many pop songs. So we're, we're using kind of a, adapted uh, music. Um, also, I, I've looked at Sesame Street and found some great stuff from Sesame Street, so the kids will love that. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, it, the, the music comes quite late into the, the process. And just today I was uh, enjoying listening to the music from Shrek and hope we might get some of that. Now this year the music's uh, going to be uh, tracked along with live musicians, uh, which is a big departure for us this year. And uh, quite scary having it, you know, trying to get all the, the technical aspect of getting the music together for that. There's going to just be two of us, but between us we play about 20 instruments. Um, I play anything that's a keyboard, which includes the accordion, so somewhere in here is going to be accordion. Uh, and uh, our percussionist uh, is probably not going to play kits that you would expect, but we're going to have things like xylophones and gongs and timpani, uh, so big sounds that we're looking for for the score. Wow, that was a whistle stop tour and there are loads more people involved with creating a show, from the producer, the costume designer, the marketing team and of course you. Christmas shows are great shows for audience participation where you get to shout, sing and join in at the actual show itself and for this show you can get involved beforehand too. The On Fife website has loads of activities you can do to get in the festival mood, making gingerbread men, colouring in, making decorations for the foyer and much more. So visit the site and have some fun.